press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Taking Life. This is Sairam Tadepalli and uh, I think you enjoyed the last video. I think you liked the last video which is on how to prepare uh, for Python programming examination step by step. So what are the units you need to focus on? What are the concepts you need to focus on initially to crack the exam? Because uh, some of the people are uh, not having the internals. They may not have internals because of several reasons. So, you need to focus on external completely for 40 marks or 50 marks. You need to write the completely for 70 to 75 marks. Then only you can expect something around 40 to 45. But now I'm going to explain a sample previous question paper now. So I'm going to record my screen. I'm going to share the screen and I will explain uh, what are the things they are expecting from you. What are the type of questions they are uh, giving in question paper. So I am focusing on one regular paper and one supplementary paper but this thing is from R16 regulation. R16 regulation is having six units and uh, in the, the question paper pattern they have uh, two marks questions and uh, essay questions but now in R19 regulation completely uh, 9 to 10 uh, essay questions are there for every question there are options uh, that is either the uh, 1A or 1B you can write or 2A or 2B write something or 1 or 2 you need to write like that so you need to understand the concept here question paper pattern might be different but the syllabus is same so you need to focus on now uh, the type they are giving the type of questions they are focusing uh, they are uh, mentioning in the question paper you need to understand that one so I am going to explain now uh, by explaining a one sample regular question paper and one sample supplementary question paper of R16 regulation. Just keep it in mind, only one unit is different, six units are compressed into five units in R19 regulation. There is no difference or uh, added extra things uh, in R16 regulation to R19 regulation. Everything is same, just one concept, scratch programming that is negligible, you need not to worry about that one. So let's get started. Here is a R16 regulation, uh, two points are uh, sinister regular. Uh, yeah, is it supplementary? Yes, it's a supplementary question paper, set one. Only one set will be there for supplementary. So this is the latest one. It's a uh, supplementary examination. And uh, if you observe, maximum marks is 70. And you have two sections, part A and part B. Part A you need to come write completely. And part B you need to answer only four questions. Each question carries uh, uh, 14 marks. So totally 70 marks. So let's start with part A. So why I need to mention the part A and part B? Even you don't have in, uh, in your question paper part A, part B. Uh, uh, you may get uh, you may get questions like 1A, 1B, 1C. So distribution will be like that. One question may be two marks. Remaining questions will be distributed with uh, seven, seven or six, six like that. So distribution will be different. So you need to focus previous question paper set two marks questions also. So here uh, first question 1A. Uh, what Python uh, uses static typing or dynamic typing? Just by your answer with an example. C First, they ask one theory question that asking about whether Python uses static typing or dynamic typing and they are asking a justification example that means they are asking for code. So yesterday I said that definition, syntax, example code and sample output like that you need to follow in the same manner what Python uses dynamic typing. What is the difference between static typing and dynamic typing? In static typing while compilation only compiler will check every variable and whether it is initialized or not but in dynamic typing like in python php uh, they can check at the runtime directly they need not to bother about variables and all those things so while compilation directly at the time of execution at the time of runtime yes, they can check so that's why python is dynamically typed so example what you can write you can compare the c and python here for static typing you can mention as c for dynamic typing you can mention a python program like uh, addition of two numbers so if it is a uh, static typing you need to mention that as uh, a equal to uh, uh, the, i mean hash in your uh, hash include stio dot h uh, int a equal to 10 into b equal to 20 uh, into c just initialize uh, 
so uh, i mean just declare c and uh, print f like that you need to mention everything uh, in the form of uh, syntaxes after uh, after compilation compiler will check whether a is initialized or not b is initialized or not c is uh, declared or not so everything it will check and it will compile but while coming to python programming you can directly mention uh, that uh, just uh, a equal to uh, something b equal to something print uh, a plus b you can directly use dynamic things and uh, you, need, you can decrease the code level of coding uh, using python so it is dynamic typing and uh, second one one b write a for loop prints uh, numbers from 0 to 57 using range as i said earlier using for loop they are mentioning from 0 to 57 that means 0 to n plus 1 n plus 1 in range for i in range 0 to 58 and in the in the loop print i so like that you need to print uh, use, using range function so they are asking like that using range function you need to write you need to print 0 to 57 so for i in range 0 to 58 because range plus 1 upper boundary plus 1 in python for loop and uh, write a program that swaps two values of uh, variables so very simple uh, concept it is uh, so let's check uh, the code here because you need to understand how to check a code so swapping uh, variables in python so you need to type like that so you need to swap two variables in one single one single line it's asking about uh, only one single line now so it is a, a defined swap so it's a it's a complex code so just do like this print a 30 30 a equal to 30 b equal to 20 a comma b equal to b comma a then print like this you can write in one single code so they are mentioning one single code because this is the only thing one single code that means so here you need to initialize all these things here you need to initialize all these things but this single code will define the swapping operation so this is the very small thing you need to understand before writing exam and uh, coming to next one what is a pip so it's a kind of uh, package or library installation syntax and uh, if you are a good python programmer you will use uh, anaconda distribution jupyter notebook spider or uh, google collaboratory if you are using anaconda distribution it will be very much useful let me introduce that also so anaconda distribution i am searching for anaconda distribution and uh, i think it's available or yeah, Anaconda distribution is available for, with me and the spider is uh, one of the ideas which is available in the Anaconda distribution so especially for Python programming this one is Anaconda prompt like our original command prompt so here using pip you can install any kind of library you require further you need to write a pip install library name for example I want to install numpy n-u-m-p-y n u m p y so just like that pip install numpy after clicking enter it will search for whether the numpy is available or not if numpy is already there requirement already satisfied it will show like that otherwise it will try to install the things uh, using pip command so that's the importance of pip for installing and uh, installing any kind of uh, library or package in python program and create a destructor in python so you all know about destructor so it's a kind of garbage collection thing other programming language we used to uh, i mean we used to call it as garbage character but here we have a double underscore del double underscore so it is kind of a destructor in the python programming so constructor means it will be called whenever objects are created destructor means whenever uh, there is no use of uh, after i mean after completely using of those of objects in our program we call it uh, we call it destructor to clean up all the things then the python script to print current date and time so let me uh, tell one thing so for these kind of things date and time 
you need to understand which type of library you need to import. If date time library is there in Python, you need to import that one. And to print that one, date time dot, date time dot, date. So like that, uh, there is a syntax in Python. So I, I will show you. Uh, print the current date and time in Python. Uh, so just a small thing. Yes. Just one, uh, one small simple thing. You need to import uh, date time uh, library here and uh, now equal to date time dot date time dot now. So it will print the current date and time according to your timestamp, according to your system stack. So like that you can use uh, Python. But to print the, to get that one date time, you need to import this library. So you should not forget importing libraries. It's very important. So importing libraries plays a very much crucial role in Python programming. So that's all about the two marks. And coming to part B. As I said yesterday, in yesterday's video, first question will be compulsory theory question because it's a introduction to Python programming. Here, explain the history of Python evaluation. evaluation. So how uh, Python came into existence uh, 13 years back, like that, it, it, it's asking about history of Python. So it's a theory question. Definitely you can't write any type of program here because it's a history of a birth and history of Python programming. You can get nearly five to six marks in this question. Next one is a uh, write Python program that reads uh, four integers from the user, print them with the single print statement without any spaces or new lines and uh, everything here you can check 2a is complete theory leave that one and 2b is a program so what is the purpose of else you need to mention how else if else is used in while loop and for loop so if they are asking for sample examples you can use a recursive function uh, like fibonacci series in if and uh, for for combination so for while loop also you can use uh, x series of printing i mean loop printing uh, and also if condition to check uh, whether the condition is uh, satisfying or not on like that you can combine if and for if and while so like that you can you need to give examples also as i said earlier definition so definition means what is the purpose there next syntax program example and output so those five things are they are asking for and coming to 3b Write a Python programming that prints multiplication table of given number. Again, it's a program. And here, they are not asking for any kind of definition. Then you need to just multiplication. You need to give acute name multiplication uh, table of any number. And then uh, you need to write the code. I mean, write the syntax first, then write the code, then expected output. Like that, you need to give. And uh, coming to 4a. Uh, what is a list in Python? List is a data structure. Uh, it can be modified anytime. So we can include any variable within the list or uh, we can remove any variable from the list from any position. So how to create a nested list? How, uh, you can get uh, materials from your, uh, uh, I mean, faculty members. These are very small, small things. Demonstrate how to create uh, and print the three dimensional matrix using list. So, three dimensional take list one, list two, list three. So, three dimensional matrix it can found if we, it, it can be converted to the data frame and data frame can be converted to the matrix. So, it's a sample code. Uh, so, uh, and 5a uh, about different types of arguments. Actually, there are four types of arguments uh, default and uh, I mean it's, uh, it's based on number of parameters you are using. Uh, uh, like uh, if it is a uh, uh, default thing like only uh, nothing uh, something uh, x equal to 10 uh, y equal to 20 they gave and uh, within the scope of that uh, if there is a, no other x and y variables are declared outside of that uh, function or within that function the default thing will can be used otherwise the modified thing can be used so like that uh, if uh, and uh, one more thing if uh, while creating a function if uh, only one variable is declared and while calling that function, if we are giving two or more variables, then it throws an error because only one argument is there. So like that, you it will try to act, uh, try to identify. So these are the different types of arguments. Actually, four types of arguments are there. Let's check one. Arguments. So these are the four different types of uh, formal arguments in Python. 
So the first one is positional arguments, next one is default arguments, next one keyboard argument, next one is variable length argument. So as a name defines, a positional arguments means only one argument will be there. So that is here def square x. So only one variable we need to give while uh, while calling that function. Next one is uh, default arg default arguments. So if here x equal to 3, y equal to 4, z equal to x plus y return z. So return sum, it will call, it will uh, print output because uh, x equal to 3, 4. If I want to give as r equal to sum of x equal to 4, then 4 plus 4. y value is default, x is changed, 4. If it is uh, sum of y equal to 45, then x will be remaining 3, then y equal to 45, 45 plus uh, 3, 48. So like that, at runtime, it will be changed, uh, default arguments. And the uh, keyword arguments, just we are giving the variables only, we are not uh, giving any values. And uh, at runtime, we are giving values to the variables mentioned in the function. Next one is variable length. So it's a kind of list we created here. Uh, so we can take any amount of uh, any number of variables here and it will, we can do some any kind of operations. So this is one of the example we can uh, look forward for the different types of arguments in Python. Next one is a write a program uh, computes harmonic sum. Harmonic sum is like this only. So sum equal to sum plus one by i. So by default i will be uh, two and the sum equal to 0. So for i in range, something like that you need to write. Uh, for i in range of uh, yeah, 1 to n numbers. So how many numbers? Uh, like uh, up to power n. n number need to be declared like that. So up to that sum equal to sum plus 1 by i. Like that, like that you need to mention and print i. That's the simple, simple thing. So demonstrate uh, implementation of hierarchical uh, inheritance. Uh, so inheritance concept, as I said earlier, there are five types of inheritance and uh, one of that is a hierarchical inheritance. You need to uh, get the data related to hierarchical inheritance and you need to print that one. You need to print that code. So you need to create parent and child nodes. You need to explain the procedure here. And uh, what the handles if accept clause in uh, exception handling? Accept, try, finally, I said yesterday. So, try block is uh, for hand, I mean, identifying the exception and accept block is uh, need to identify which type of exception is that one and it need to uh, give some uh, instruction or uh, statement and finally, it has to do compulsory and finally, thing need to be executed compulsory. So, it's a sample example. And uh, how to write a test cases, it's a, it's a very basic thing, uh, how a test case can be run, uh, so using Selenium or uh, like that. And uh, Turtle, Turtle program, it's a very simple thing. So as uh, these, this eight, seventh question is very complex thing, so you need not to worry about uh, our 50 unit completely. So some part only you, you need to understand for uh, small, small questions, GUI and uh, Turtle, take Inter, like that, everything can be learn from previous four units because they are very much easy and you can learn easily. So this is about uh, supplementary question paper. I think uh, if you observe 95% uh, 98% question paper consisting of programming only as I said yesterday 95 to 98% consisting of programming so you need to focus on how to understand the program and how to write the program. And uh, that's all about this supplementary question paper. In next video, I'm going to explain about regular question paper. Thank you. Bye.